Welcome to Not Just a Transaction, the podcast series hosted by experienced real estate authorities, Nick Prefontaine and Zachary Beach. Each week, the hosts bring you expert guests to help you navigate the many creative options available for buying or selling a home while cutting out the costly hurdles of a conventional real estate deal. Hi, it's Nick Prefontaine here again for another episode of Not Just a Transaction with Zachary Beach. Yeah, today- I was going to say, don't forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, everyone out there, we're going to be covering the question, what if the market crashes? And I actually have this question come up to me quite often, but it's phrased a little bit differently because I specialize in our business, pre-property solutions. I specialize in working with our buyers and holding their hand through the whole process, uh, meaning getting them into the property for viewings and everything after that, which would be arranging buyers meetings. And then if we accept you, getting you to the closing table. So I work hand in hand with the buyers. So it's phrased a little bit differently, excuse me, from the buyer's perspective. What that is, is what if the house doesn't appraise when it gets to the end of my rent on term? First, we want to make sure that we're building in a huge upside for our buyers so that, in fact, it is actually going to benefit you uh, for getting your own loan. Uh, Now, let me break that down a little bit. What I mean by that is all the way along over our buyer's rent to own term, you're putting additional payments towards your down payment. So more often than not, you're getting to the end of your rent on term, going to get your own loan, it's actually going to benefit you. Your payment is going to either remain the same or drop slightly. So it's going to benefit you to get your own loan. Now, another important point to mention, and if not more important, we want to make sure that the house is going to appraise. And we want to make sure that the buyers get being successful in getting their own loan. However, if the impossible does happen and we're all left with that scenario, we have a few different options. Number one, an appraisal is a very subjective thing. It shouldn't be, but it is. Meaning that if you get four different appraisals, chances are they're going to be at different numbers. They're all going to be different, or at least three of them are. So we can usually request a new appraisal for a few, and and for the most part, that does the trick. And again, though, because we're all about covering the worst case scenario here on this show, on this podcast, if all three of those numbers come back the same, we have a few different options. First, we can wait another three to six months, and then we'll just do another appraisal. In fact, we're doing this right now on a few of our homes that we have buyers in homes that that, the house is just not appraising right now. We're just waiting another three to six months. Then we're doing the appraisal again, and that usually does a trick. The important thing I want to mention here is that This definitely does work. And Zach, you could probably attest to this because we're doing it every day in our business. So that these are real life scenarios. Number two, um, number two option, if the house doesn't appraise or for whatever reason, the buyer can usually come up with more of a down payment, making it easier for them to get their own loan. One of our buyers is having to do this right now. Uh, but they're still able to go through with the purchase and get their own loan. That's closing within the next 30 days. The important thing to mention is that both of these examples, both of these buyers are serious and committed with going through and purchasing the home with, with getting their own loan. If they weren't, they could have very easily 
thrown their hands up, buried their heads in the sand, and, and just left, thrown in the towel. More often than not, we find as long as you're willing to stick with this and buy the house and go through with the purchase, we can promise you that you'll be successful. We really look forward to working with those buyers out there who haven't yet got to the point of finding a house. So, Zach, because you work with the sellers a little bit more, uh, actually, that that's who you specialize. That's like that. That's with. like all I work with. All those you are the only, those are the only people I work with, unless yeah. you happen to be out on sick leave or on vacation or something along those lines. That that's who I work with. So if you're getting a call from me, buyers, that means that Nick is either exploring the Caribbean Sea uh, or he's sick in bed. So um, I do want to just hit briefly on what you stated with with uh, appraisals being subjective. It's the craziest thing. I'm buying a house traditionally right now, uh, not. Not because I, I really want to. Uh, I would rather buy properties the way we do and have done for the past uh, seven years, but just happen to fall in that place. And I can tell you that the appraisal that I'm getting on my house is the exact, get this guys, the exact dollar amount, not no pennies off, no nothing to the purchase price in which we agreed to. So I can tell you that banks just want to make sure within reason that the, that the loan that they're giving to you is going to cover the property. So just, just realize that. That's, um, a, that's a funny thing, Zach. Do you think uh, the realtor and the appraiser are talking per se? Uh, definitely the mortgage lender and the appraiser. That'd be my guess, but we'll get into conspiracy theories on a different show. <laughs> <laughs> so from, from the seller standpoint, yes, I work with all the sellers. So um, the main concern when it surrounds this question uh, from a seller is, okay, I'm selling you my property uh, for a couple of years, right? You don't have to cash me out for a couple of years. It could be three, it could be five, it could be 10, whatever, whatever it is down the line. And me and you are agreeing upon a specific amount of equity today. How do I know that on or before the end of that time frame, you're actually going to cash me out because there's other factors in place, such as an appraisal for our buyer uh, and or markets. So markets could drop, they could go up, they could do a bunch of different things. And, um, if we, if me and Nick both knew, then we would all be, me and him both would be sailing the Caribbean seas right now. Uh, but it, we don't know. So there's a, so there's a couple of key points that I just want to throw out here, which goes along with the buyers. So if you're a seller out there and you listen to Nick's part of this, this podcast about the buyers, then you know that we are getting them to the finish line. We just are dipping and dodging it and, uh, and kind of working through this process because there tends not to be a straight line. Uh, when it comes to this biz. So what is it? The three D's or four D's of dodgeball? Yeah, that's right. Dodge, <laughs> dodgeball. Dip, duck, dive. And dodge. <laughs> so number one, uh, the longer the term that we agree upon with you. So if we're buying the property for three, five, 10 years, let's say the 10 year term is, is makes it way easier for everybody, even though more than likely this property is going to cash out way way before the 10 year time frame, meaning before we have to catch up completely, it just gives us the ability to pivot a little more and to be able to work with our buyers in case outside forces come into play. Uh, and again, you as the seller will have no idea unless you want to about what's happening because we handle everything, which is my second point of this could we be handle absolutely everything. And then lastly, if we happen to be working shorter term, um, meaning like in the three year, four year, five year time frame, then the principal pay down that we're receiving um, on the property, meaning when we're making your monthly payment and the principal that's coming off of it, that is really a protection for both us and the end buyer because we both know that if we're getting in, into this type of agreement that you, the seller, want to be cashed out. That's the number one thing. You want to eventually be able to move on. Um, so the principal pay down in that gives us the ability to have thousands of dollars on which we can drop the price if there's an appraisal dis, uh, uh, dis, uh, dispute is the word I was like, uh, or discrepancy. That's another good D. Yeah. We do a lot of Ds on this on this podcast. It gives us the ability to pivot there, or if the market slightly dips. Uh, so there's a so that or principal pay down is uh, is, uh, is 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 important there. So. That would be my three points if you're sitting there and you're listening to your seller. It's like longer term, makes it way easier. Uh, principal pay down 
of course, is giving all of us the benefit because we're more than happy to take less profit on a deal if we can get somebody to the finish line, uh, which is most important. And then number three is we handled the entire process. So just realize that you'll never have to worry about it. Um, so Nick, I think we covered all the D's possible. Uh, everybody played a little dodgeball and I think we covered that question. Yeah, what there's a you? number There's a number of forces at play, least of which is the dark forces. Yes, that's right. Everybody, uh, we'll see you next week on Not Just a Transaction. See you soon. Thanks for listening to another episode of Not Just a Transaction. If you want to learn more on selling a home, buying a home, or resources to learn more, head on over to our website at original re.com